what is it? It's another case for Nick Carter, master detective. <laughs> Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented by the three great home brighteners, Linex Clear Gloss, Linex Cream Polish, and Linex Self-Polishing Wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paint. Today's curious adventure, Murder on Mad Mountain, or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Opera Singer's Dog. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick Carter solved the mystery of the murder on Mad Mountain by the aid of a dog lost in the snow. But first, let me tell you something. You and your family take pride in your home, of course. That's why you keep it bright and sparkling with Chemtone, the miracle wall finish that brings new beauty to your walls. With Linex Clear Gloss, the transparent finish that gives lustrous, durable protection to every wood and linoleum surface in your home. Linex Clear Gloss, a favorite in thousands of American homes, flows on easily without brush marks, drying to an attractive gloss that wears and wears and looks beautiful for a long, long time. What's more, it resists damage by hot grease, boiling water, fruit acids, perfume, even alcohol. And Linex Clear Gloss keeps dirt on the surface so that it's easily wiped away. Keep your home looking lovely with Linex Clear Gloss. Available at your paint, hardware, or department store. Headquarters for all three great Linex home brighteners and Chemtone. The miracle wall finish that dries in one hour. <laughs> And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. As we open our story today, we find Nick and Patsy in a train which is crossing the hump of Mad Mountain in a raging blizzard. This is a pretty thrilling experience, Nick, riding over the mountain in a blizzard like this. We're just as snug and cozy inside the train here as if we were in our own home. It may be thrilling, Patsy, but it's pretty dangerous, too. Dangerous? What's dangerous about it? Well, up here on Mad Mountain, there's always the danger of a snow slide sweeping down on us and pushing the whole train down into the canyon. Or we could run into extra heavy drifts and get stalled. In fact, that's where Mad Mountain got its name, and the trouble it's always caused the railroad. Well, I don't care. I'm enjoying it just the same. Wonder how much behind schedule we are. Here comes the conductor. I'll ask him. Oh, conductor? Sure. How late are we going to be? Well, I can't tell you, miss. Depends on how long this storm keeps up. Say, conductor... Didn't you used to be on the New York to Miami run in the Penzi about ten years ago? Well, yes, I did. Left there eleven years ago next March. I thought so. I used to ride with you often in those days. Is your name Bonner? Robert Bonner? Gosh, what a memory. Sure, I'm Robert Bonner, but I, I don't remember you. <laughs> Take the detective's trained mind to remember names and faces, Mr. Bonner. Nick's a great one for that. Uh, Nick? You don't mean you're Nick Carter? Guilty in the first degree. Well, 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 don't that beat all. After 11 years, I would say, Mr. Carter, I, you know, I'm sort of glad you're riding with us this trip. You want me to help you find the tracks again if the train runs off them? <laughs> it ain't the blizzard I was thinking of, bad as it is. That opera star we got hitched on the rear of the train. You mean that private car we saw at the terminal belonged to a real opera star? Who is she? Her name's Pauline Hall, and she's a stuck-up, oh, highfalutin' queen of them all. Well, why are you worried about her? Well, after we hitched her car on, I went back to see if everything was okay. Orders, you know. Sure, I know. Well, out she comes, wearing more jewels than the Russian royal family. She waves her hand at me, and she says, Conductor, please see that no one is permitted to enter my car at all. I'm not to be disturbed before we get to Sacramento in the morning. A fuzzy little chow dog of hers stands there blinking at me. <laughs> Collar around his neck, studded with diamonds. Well, a chow is a high-class dog, Mr. Bonner. <laughs> and then, and then, as if there ain't enough trouble for me trying to keep everything straight around here with a blizzard blowing down my neck, I get this telegram from the chief. Says I gotta take care of the dame and her sparklers as if they were my own. <laughs> Says the stuff she's carrying is worth about a hundred thousand cash. That's a lot of jewels to be lying around loose. Yeah, maybe she won't be disturbed in Sacramento in the morning either if that dumb engineer of ours don't use more sand. <laughs> we was an hour behind crawling up the other side. Now we ain't even crawling. Why, Nick, we stopped. We aren't moving at all now. Sounds as if we're in trouble. Yes, sir. We are in trouble. Engineer's whistling for a flag, man. 
You've got to get him out fast. Won't he like that on a night like this? Well, what do you need a flagman for up here in the mountain? Well, the second section, this train's right behind us. In oh. this snow, she could plow right into us before she knew we were here. Hey, Carney, Carney, wake up, you. Well, what's the matter now, Bob? Now get your flag and get going. We're stuck. Oh, look, on a night like this... There's no you don't... time to argue, Carney. Now, you get ready and start on your way back. And you'll be sure to get back a full half mile, too, before you set up your flares. Be watching, so shake it up. Uh, I suppose I've got to climb out and wait around that Opera Star's car. She won't let me go through. You bet she won't. When you go by her car, don't cuss so loud you wake her up either. I don't want to be hauled on the carpet for disturbing her nibs. Uh, snow must be up to my waist by this time. Yes, and don't, watch out you don't fall over into the canyon. There ain't much room to spare between the track and the edge of that cliff, you know. Uh, of all the doggone dirty jobs on a railroad, this being a place. <laughs> he doesn't look very happy. No, no, and I ain't very happy either. That doddering old throttle pusher up there in the cab was a real he-man. We wouldn't be stopping for a little snow. Uh, well, ain't nothing to do now but wait. Hope the second section don't jam into us. What's the engineer trying to do now, Bob? Well, yeah, sounds like he's signaling to the other section. That dumb flagman of mine set the flares going like I told him to. They ought to stop the rest of this drag. Then there wouldn't be no need for all that tooting and whistling. Well, why don't you look and see if you can see the flares, Mr. Bonner? Mm-hmm. They certainly show up across the snow. Now that it stops snowing. Well, that's just what I'm going to do. You want to come, Mr. Carter? Wait till I get my coat on and I'll be right with you. Uh, you ready, Mr. Carter? Yeah, take a look out the platform to have the car here. Uh, now, watch out. We'll open up here. Yeah. There we are. Hey, mighty cold out here. Must be near zero. Yeah, very near. That's the other section, Mr. Carter, and they got the signal. Well, that takes care of that. Hey, wait a minute. What, what, what's that? Good gosh, it sounds like... It is. That's an avalanche. Look out. Sounds like a big slide. Yes, sir. Hey, that was awful close. Too close for comfort. Yes, sir, indeed. Mr. Stowe... Went right by us. And what about the flagman? You suppose that he might have been... Uh, Carney, he must have been right in the pass. I'd better see if he... I'll go with you. Come on. Now, watch your step along this edge of the canyon, Mr. Carter. A thousand feet drops to the state highway at the bottom. Don't worry. I'm watching. Uh, look at the queen's car here. Not a light in it. Not a peep out of the old girl. I'd have thought the noise of that slide would have woken the dead. Didn't you say she had a maid and a porter with her, too? Funny they're not awake. Yeah. Probably she's got them both so scared. Don't dare make a sound while she's asleep. The dog, too. Didn't hear a peep out of him, either. Hey, Bob, look ahead there. Yeah. That slide cleared off a place about a quarter mile wide. Yes, sir. Only missed us by about a hundred yards. Wait a minute. I've got my flashlight here. Let me see if we can see anything of Carney anywhere. Thanks, Mr. Carter. There, there ain't no use looking for him. Not after that. Hey, listen. I don't hear nothing. There it is again. And it's down there over the edge of the canyon. Yeah, flash your light down there. See if we... Oh, I can't see a thing. Must have... Hey, Bob, look there. The flagman. Carney. Yes. Caught in that little tree down there. Must be 50 feet down the side of the slope. What's he doing down there? He must have slipped and fallen over the edge on his way back. Yeah, but say that's not Carney making that noise. No, it isn't, but I can't see anything else down there that's making it. Eh, No wonder they named this Mad Mountain. Well, go get a couple of porters and some rope. All right. We'll have to get Carney out of there quick if he's still alive. Now, give me a hand with the body. Mr. Carter, is he dead? Yes, he broke his neck when he fell. Ah, poor Carney. 
Well, it's a long ride we've had together. You two porters stay here with the body for a bit. Yeah. Bob, you and I have a job to do. Come on, quick. A job? What do you mean? Hey, where are you going? If it's what I think it is, we've got a real job on our hands. You got a key to the Queen's private car? The Queen? Well, no, no. What do you want that for? You know what I found down there when I was getting Connie's body? No, I ain't got any idea. Well, that child dog of hers is caught in a clump of bushes. That's below where Connie yeah. stopped now. Yeah, I'll bet that darn dog got out of the car and chased Carney, and Carney fell over the edge trying to get away from him. Certainly hope you're right, Bob, but I don't think so. Well, what do you think did happen then? I'll tell you in a minute. Here's the end of the Queen's car. Yeah. Maybe I've got a key that'll fit this door. Now well, they have a special lock on it. I can't wait to take it now. Watch out. Hey, we can't go busting into private cars like that. We can this time. Now I can unlock it from the inside. Well, what do you think you're going to find in here? Come on in. Shut the door. All right. I don't see what... Look here, Bob. Look. Hey, what are those stains on the rug there? That, that ain't... That ain't... Hey, what's that? I came from in here. Well, that's her porter all tied up. Yes. And he's been drugged, too. Well, I don't understand. I thought so. See there? Oh, look at all that blood. Yes. And the queen put up quite a struggle for her life, but she lost. Oh, I'll say there was a fight here. Look at this room, everything upside down. Yes. And everything valuable gone. Nothing left but some toilet articles. Where's the maid's compartment? Uh, it's, it's over here. Oh, gosh almighty. She's dead, too. Strangled to death, looks like. Those purple marks around her neck couldn't mean anything else. Oh, what a smell. What is it, Mr. Carter? It smells like perfume. Yeah, see there? Broken perfume bottle. Got smashed in the struggle. Phew. The smell is so strong, it's sickening. Oh, I'm going to catch it for this. What's in the other compartment? I wouldn't know. I, I could just hope it ain't more bodies. Well, we'll see. Aha, uh -huh, just as I suspected. See those cigarette burns on the dresser and the empty bottles? Two men hid in here, waited until the time was right, then killed the queen and her maid and stole the jewels. How do you know there was two men? Two different brands of cigarettes here. Oh, yeah. Hey, where do you suppose they got aboard? Probably hid in here before the car left the junction. Well, do you, do you suppose they're still on the train? See if the front door of the car is unlocked. Oh, sure, sure. Yes, Mr. Carter, it's not locked. Well, they probably went out that way, and they're somewhere on the train now. Bob, they must have figured that nobody would enter this car before it reached Sacramento. Uh -huh. They were all set to drop off at one of the way stations before that. But undoubtedly, the snow slide interfered with their plans. And in this deep snow, there's no place they could go without being in danger of their lives. Uh. Yes, I feel sure they're still on the train. Well, can you find any clues to tell us who they are? Well, I hope so. Well, could you take some fingerprints, maybe? Well, it would take too long to fingerprint everybody in the train. Now we've got to find some other way to do it. Yes, but How? I don't know yet, oh. but I think I have an idea. Well, what do we do now? Bring Carney's body in here. Let the passengers think he was killed in the slide, but don't let them know he was murdered. Murdered? You say Carney was murdered, too? I thought you said his neck was broken. It was, but the back of his head was crushed in, too, and that was no accident. Oh, poor That's Carney. what led me to believe that there might have been trouble here in the Queen's car. Bob, as I see it, the chow made trouble for the killers when they started their work. So they took it outside to get rid of it, but they ran it to Carney. Mm-hmm. They killed him and threw him and the dog into the canyon. And that so long as the killers think that Carney and the dog are both dead, we'll let them keep on thinking so. At least until I can rescue that chow. Are you crazy, Mr. Carter? That, that mud ain't worth risking your neck for. No. I have an idea. Maybe he can tell us who the killers are. Oh, what the heck? Chows can't talk. I have an idea. Maybe this one can't. At least I'm going to find out anyway. <laughs> Nick thinks he can make the chow talk, at least enough to tell him who killed the opera singer and stole her jewels. Will the dog still be alive by the time he can get down to rescue it? And will it tell him what he wants to know? We'll see in just a moment. There is no more attractive background for your furniture than lustrous, well-kept floors. And Linex self-polishing wax keeps all your floors looking their best, whether they're wood, tile, or linoleum. Yet it takes only a jiffy to apply and dries without rubbing to an elastic, satiny finish that wears amazingly. Because Linex self-polishing wax contains the highest possible content of genuine Carnauba wax, with no gum, shellac, or resin in it to chip or crumble. When the most used parts of your floor show wear, you needn't re-wax the whole floor either. And Linex self-polishing wax is so resistant to dirt and water that it keeps the soil on the surface 
where it's easily wiped away with a damp cloth or mild suds. In addition, Linex self-polishing wax is the non-skid floor finish, resisting slip even when water is spilled on it. The underwriters' laboratories, whose seal is on each bottle, have proved this fact. So get it now. Linex. L-I-N-X. Linex self-polishing wax. You'll find all three great Linex home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, at paint, hardware, and department stores everywhere. And now back to our story. We left Nick planning to rescue the dead opera singer's dog, which is caught on a bush on the side of the canyon in the hopes that it might some way reveal the identity of the murderers of his mistress. But where did Nick go, Mr. Bonner? He wouldn't tell me, Miss Bowen. He just told me to come to the baggage car, get all the extra rope we have, and wait till he got back. No, I wish you wouldn't try to rescue that dog tonight. It's too dangerous in the dark on a freezing night like this. I tried to tell him that, but he wouldn't listen to me. Just said that the dog was going to help him find the killers. Crazy talk. I'm glad it isn't so crazy, Mr. Bonner. Nick has a way of knowing what he's talking about, but... I wish you would... that rope for me, bro. Uh, look, Mr. Carter, now, why don't you let me take the baggage and mail crews and search the train for these killers? Well, that'd be useless, Bob. Uh, Those crooks are only two out of several hundred people on this train. How could you tell them from the others? Well, I... Furthermore, once you let the passengers know there have been two murders on this train, you'll see what happens. Oh, gosh, Nick, you're right. We might have a panic on our hands. I guess you're right, but I don't like it just the same, risking your neck for a fool dog. I like dogs, and this one's hurt and probably freezing by now. Nick, what were you doing in the train just now? I thought you said you weren't going to try to spot the killers. I wasn't, Patsy. Not exactly. Well, then what were you doing? Looking for something. Well, did did you find... Maybe. We'll see you later. I'll be left to have that rope. Sure you don't want me to come with you? No, you stay here. I don't want any of the train crew or passengers to know what's going on. Well, okay, whatever you say. If Mr. Bonner's not going with you, I am. Well, now that the storm's over, I guess it's safe enough. But you better dress warmly, Patsy. It's mighty cold out. Look, Nick, there's an extra trainman's outfit here. That's heavy enough. Could I use that, Mr. Bonner? Sure, sure, if you can get into it. I can get into it all right with plenty left over. Patsy, I want to get that dog while he's still alive. Hurry up, will you? Let's get going. I'm glad that wind died down. Not quite so cold now. That's right. Is this where you found the brakeman? Oh, yes, I can see the marks in the snow. Is the dog here too, Nick? Yes, Patsy. He was caught in a small bush just below where the brakeman was. How are you going to get down to him? I'm going to tie this larger rope to the rail here, if I can find it under this snow. Ah, yes, here it is. This rail is cold. That should be a knot that it holds. Yeah. Now... I'll let myself down the side of the canyon with it. Mm Mm-hmm. You keep hold of this smaller rope. When I've tied the dog to it, you pull it up. Okay. I can climb back up the other rope myself. It's a good thing we have the headlight from the locomotive on the second section to help us. Gosh, it's bright. Yes, even though it's at least a half mile down the track, it's light enough for us to see by. All right, are you ready? Well, gee, Nick, suppose your hands get so cold you can't pull yourself back up. Don't worry, they won't, Patsy. I'll be getting enough exercise so I'll keep warm. It's you I'm worried about. Are you warm enough? Oh, sure. This outfit I've got on keeps all the cold out. I'm okay. All right, then. I'm off. I'll let you know as soon as I'm ready to have the dog pulled up. I'll be waiting. Take care of yourself, Nick. I'm all right. <laughs> Careful, Nick. Now, here he is, Patsy, and he's still alive. Oh, good. Oh, poor little fella. All right, steady, Billy. We'll have you up where it's nice and warm in no time. There we are. Now, let's put this little rope around your belly. Hold still, hold still. Now, I'll tie it around your forelegs so it won't slip. There. I don't want to lose you now. You're too valuable to me. You ready, Nick? Just a minute. Hey, take it easy, will you? You'll be all right. There we are. Now, we'll have a nice ride. All right, pull him up, Patsy. Careful. Okay, coming up. I'll just pull myself up with you so I can keep my eye on you and be sure you won't slip out of the ropes. Don't fight it, boy. Don't fight it. Easy now, easy. You okay, Nick? Yes, we're both coming along all right. Oh, the poor little fellow. He must be frozen. I probably is. There. I'm not too warm myself. All right, boy. You untie him, will you, while I get this rope off the track? Okay. Yeah, take it easy, pup. Yeah, now, just... I don't blame you for being mad. I'm mad, too. You're all right now. You're all right. There you are. Can you stand up? 
Oh, Nick, do you suppose any of his bones are broken? I hope not. Here, let me see. <laughs> no, I think he's just suffering from exposure. He's hardly more than a pup. Well, I'll carry him back to the dining car. We'll get the chef to fix him something hot. Some good hot milk with a little brandy in it ought to make him feel like a new dog. And something hot wouldn't hurt us either. Come on. <laughs> Nick. He feels much better than he did. Why, he walks around almost normally now. Yes, yeah, a little something warm to eat fixed him. Uh, here, and that rub down you gave him. Well, what are you planning to do now, Nick? Let me have that small piece of rope, will you? Hmm. I want to make a leash for him. You're not going to take that poor pup out for a walk, are you? Take him out? No. Take him for a walk? Yes. But why? Patsy, have you forgotten we're on the trail of two murderers? Of course not, Nick, but... Uh... There. That's not much of a leash, but I think it'll serve the purpose. All right, Bob, you ready? I sure am ready for anything, but... Say, do I smell trouble? You might. We'll know pretty quick now. Well, may I come too, Nick? Not this time, Patsy. Just wait here and cross your fingers for luck. Okay. Where are you going? To the smoking compartment of the first car. I want to show the dog something. Easy now, Bob. All right. The smoking compartment's just ahead here. Okay. Quiet, boy, quiet. You'll get your chance in just a minute. I remember back some 20 years ago, we were held up in for four days in the slide on a railroad up in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's always been where it's worse. Now, listen, Bob. I'm going to let the dog loose when we get to the door of the compartment. Uh I'll follow him in, and you stay back on me. I don't want to seem to brag. I was just going to say... Ah, shut up. This is bad enough now without you making it worse. Hey, Bob, you hear that? Yeah, but what? Quiet. I'm letting him loose. Uh, of course, you don't want to. Way down. Button your left. You ready, Bob? Yeah. All right, here goes. We stay here until I say so. You guys so. just can't keep that trap shut when they're... Take the horse, the devil! Hey, 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 take the horse! Hey, 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 Get the hands up now. You ain't got no right to come in here. That don't way. try to get your gun or I'll let you have it right. I got my hands up. That's better. I don't like shooting. All right, Bob, take the guns away from them. Yeah. Be sure you get all of them. And see what else they have on them at the same time. Sure, Mr. Carter, sure. I'll give them a good going over. Carter, you ain't Nick Carter. I certainly am. Wouldn't you know, Pete? We pull a job way up here in the mountains and Nick Carter has to be on the train. Oh, shut up. He ain't got nothing on us. Nothing. No, I think I have plenty. Prove it. You want to say this? Find anything interesting, Bob? No, nope, nothing. Just these three guns. Nothing else. Yeah, you say. We ain't done nothing. I told you you got no right. You and your pal murdered the opera singer and are made in their private car tonight. You slugged the brakeman and threw him over the cliff. You stole all the singer's jewels. You call that nothing? Ah, this guy's nuts, Pete. Yeah. Go on and prove it, copper. But get me a doctor first, will you? My leg's all bent up. Look, I'm bleeding. I'll get you a doctor after I get your confession. We don't know nothing about it, do we, Mike? No. We don't know a thing. It wasn't even there. All right, very well. We'll all sit right here and wait until you two decide to give us the information we want. All right, Flatfoot, sit. You can wait till next year, but you won't lay nothing from us. Okay. I'll wait. Oh, look, copper, I gotta get a doctor. Hey, Bob. Huh? You know how quick hydrophobia sets in after a dog bites? Well, I know I don't. Uh, pretty quick, I think. Let's see, if I remember correctly, there's no cure for it after it does set in, is there? Oh, well, sure. I don't believe there is. No cure. Oh. How long would you say it is since the dog bit Pete here? It must be about ten minutes now, I'd say. Uh, ten minutes, huh? And it only takes hydrophobia about five minutes. Yeah, all right, all right. I'll tell, I'll tell. Only give me a doctor. Please. You'll get a doctor when I get your confession. Okay, okay. We, we killed him, Mike and me. We, we hid in the old dame's car before I left the yard. Where are the jewels? We, we made a bundle out of them and then threw them clear off the cliff. They're down near the state road at the bottom. Get me a doctor. Will you buy it? You're not dying. Not yet. Yeah, I am. I am. I got hydrophobia. Sure. Get a doc, will You're you? You're a fool. You can't get hydrophobia from a dog bite unless the dog has hydrophobia before he bites you. Huh? And this dog is as clean and healthy as a dog could be. There's no more danger from those bites than I am. You mean... You mean I, I ain't gonna get sick from the bites? Not in the slightest. Pete! He tricked us! Uh, dirty double-crossing right out of... You ought to keep quiet. Bob. Yeah. 
See if you can find a doctor. Then take the dog back to Patsy. He's done a good night's work. And bring some rope to tie up these cheap thugs. Sure, Mr. Cutter. Come on, Pooch. Come on, come on, fella. Come on. I, uh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Carter, is it? Why, why, yes. Uh, hey, where are you? I, I'm here under this seat. Is it safe to come <laughs> out now? Yes, indeed. Come on out and join the party. Uh, thank you. It's, uh, much more comfortable out here. <laughs> Mr. Carter, may I ask you a question? Why, certainly. Go right ahead. How, uh, um, how did you know these were the men who uh, uh, killed somebody? Oh, very simple. When I walked through the train a while ago, I noticed that the tobacco smoke in this compartment was scented heavily with perfume. Perfume, these thugs got spilled on them when a bottle of perfume broke in the opera singer's car during the fight. Oh, that, 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 that is wonderful, Mr. Uh, Carter. Well, wonderful. <laughs> well, I couldn't be absolutely positive just from the perfume. And I couldn't know which of the six men in the compartment were the ones I wanted. And knowing that the men were armed, I had to be sure. Yes, 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 of course. So I brought the dog in here, knowing that a chow would never stop hating the men who killed his mistress. And he supplied me with the additional evidence I needed. Then it was a very simple matter, as you heard, to get their confession. And the, 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 the jewels, will you, will, 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 will you get those two? I shall notify the state police as soon as I can contact them. The snow slide and the marks I made going down the side of the cliff after the dog will mark the place closely enough. That, 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 that's wonderful. That, that, that dog's a, a smart dog, isn't he? <laughs> well, a lot smarter than these two crooks. He'll never go to the electric chair. That's more than I can say for them. In just a moment, Nick and Patsy will bring you a preview of next week's exciting case. But first, here's a worthwhile thought. These are busy times, times for streamlined efficiency in everything we do. And American homemakers everywhere are learning how much time they save when they preserve the natural beauty of their furniture with Linex Cream Polish, which cleans as it polishes in one easy process. Linex Cream Polish requires no tiresome rubbing, and in one quick, easy application, removes cloudy dust and polish accumulation, it banishes messy fingerprints, and helps conceal ugly scratches. Linex cream polish dries hard, too, leaving no oily film to attract more dust and make more work for you. So by all means, keep your treasured furniture lovely the easy way with Linex cream polish. Remember to ask for it at your dealers. If he hasn't received his supply of the three great Linex home brighteners, he'll probably have them soon. Ask him to save one or all of them for you. Acme will see that he gets them, and you get them, as quickly as possible. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. How about it, Nick? What thrilling story are you going to tell us next week? Well, next week, Ken, I'm going to tell you a simple little story which begins when the milkman arrives at a customer's house to find the young wife tied up in the kitchen of her home and her young husband shot to death in his bed. The local sheriff couldn't seem to make head nor tails out of the case. But when Nick took hold, he picked up a small clue here and another one there and got the right answer. An answer, I may say, that was somewhat unexpected. Is it an exciting case? Well, tracking down a murderer is always exciting to me. Well, what do you call the story, Nick? I call it the two-pillow murder. Or the mystery of the milkman's discovery. And that's all for now. So long, everybody. So long. And so long to you both, Nick and Patsy. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again next week. Next week at the same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter, Master Detective, entitled The Two Pillow Murder. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Milkman's Discovery. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is a copyright feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. It is presented at this same time and over these same stations by the three great Linex home brighteners. Linex Clear Gloss, Linex Cream Polish, and Linex Self-Polishing Wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. In the Nick Carter Adventures, Lon Clark is starred as Nick. Helen Choate is featured as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White. The programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linux dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. This is Mutual. <laughs>